All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome into another episode. My name's Jeremy Haynes. I've got a banger for you here today. If you're an existing subscriber, it is always a pleasure. I'm pumped to be able to provide a lot more value to you here today. If you're new to the channel, all we talk about is hitting million dollar months, okay? Months with an S, plural. I wanna help you on your journey. Although 0.1% of businesses on earth ever hit those kinds of numbers, maybe you are one of the 0.1. Who knows, you might know, and you sure as hell need a lot of help in order to make that kind of goal happen. That includes the strategy we talk about right here on this very channel. We'd encourage you to subscribe, check out all the other videos after you get done with this one. And whether you subscribe or not, do me a favor, like the video, I appreciate all your help. Tonight, we're talking about the chunk method, okay? Not every business that hits million dollar months do it with one specific conversion mechanism, okay? Sometimes, and to be fair, this is more than half the time, a business doing a million dollars a month, the big 12 million a year, they do it with one specific conversion mechanism. It's very surprising, but it's true. That might be a webinar funnel. Could be a call funnel, most commonly more than anything else. I've seen it with DM ads, okay? There are a lot of different ways. I've seen it, to be fair, even with Instagram shout outs, okay? And that kind of strategy, mainly leading to DMs, but an organic mechanism rather than a paid advertising mechanism, even though it is paid to be fair, but it's, you know, organic distribution. I digress. Point being, most businesses, more than half, that hit million dollar months, do it with one funnel. However, the other half, that minority, they do it with the chunk method, which might be more appropriate for you. So allow me to break this down. The chunk method is rather simple. Again, rather than having one specific conversion mechanism that's responsible for the entirety of your million dollar months, it looks more like this, where you have maybe two or three different things that are actively converting. And some of them, you know, might be dominating. Some of them might be a minority. But again, you simply put, you have more than one way of driving customers into the business. To some of you listening to this that already have more than one way of driving customers into the business, you might be thinking to yourself, holy shit, are you kidding me? There's businesses out there that literally have all of their revenue come from singular funnels and conversion points? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, to be clear, in this case, let me give you an example here with some common funnel strategies that are used and I'll, I'll rotate it, all right? Number one, as we talk about on this channel quite frequently in love, call funnels. Two, webinars. These can be live webinars, on-demand webinars, whatever. To be clear, three, DM strategies, DM ads, okay? whether it's driven organically via paid advertising. These are the big three nowadays. Call funnels being the dominating factor. Webinars still having a solid contribution. I also wanna be fair in saying shout outs to challenge funnels. Now, some months, okay, we have clients that do million dollar months that look like this as well. There might be a dominating variable that kind of dwarfs the other variables. That dominating variable in this particular case might be the month they had an event. We'll have clients that have upwards of 50,000 virtual registrants, most commonly anywhere from 10,000 to 25,000. That's gonna cause for a big month. You might have a good month or two months where you're driving traffic to these conversion mechanisms. That leads to a pretty substantial buildup and a sacrifice over those two specific months prior or the month prior where they sacrifice some revenue, okay? However, it leads to a massive conversion mechanism, a massive conversion day. And that day in particular might drive upwards of more than half of the revenue. But not every business can do that every single month, especially given the market that you might be operating it. it might be small, it might not be possible to do that every month, it might not be realistic, simply put. And that's why it's more inconsistent, but again, commonly used amongst the big dogs out there in their respective industries. More commonly than not, every month is gonna have anywhere from two to three specific conversion mechanisms that chunk a good couple hundred grand each into what you do. So in this particular case, if we look at it, we might have upwards of 100K a month coming from this particular funnel. We might have upwards of 600K a month coming from this particular funnel. And in this particular case, we might have 300K coming from this particular funnel. Some months we might have huge months. Maybe we have a total of like 1.5 mil that comes from a specific funnel in a month. And again, the usuals are the same. Maybe this funnel chunks 600, this funnel chunks 300, this channel chunks 100. These could be the big months where you do upwards of two to three million a month. And usually with great events, that's what they do. Now, with the chunk method, there's more than just revenue to look at. And I'm gonna break that down in a moment, but I really wanna finalize this specific section with you and genuinely make sure you understand this, okay? If you struggle to scale the living shit out of one specific campaign, and as a result of that, you fail to see big leaps and bounds of progress on that funnel in a given month, 
or a quarter, you likely need to refer to the chunk method rather than trying to just scale the living shit out of one specific funnel. You know if it's hot, you know? Like when you have the chosen one and you're milking the living shit out of it, it just doesn't stop producing the milk, doesn't stop printing. The printer doesn't shut off when you've got the chosen one, okay? Usually there are ceilings that happen dependent upon a few variables. And I do want to make you aware of those, okay? Some of those variables are the market size. If you remember one of the very first videos I did when I started making content consistently for you was I talked about this concept from The Ultimate Selling Machine by Chet Holmes. Great book. In this book, he talks about the stadium method and he gave this visual of market size. Now, with every market that that exists, there comes a point where you get diminishing returns the broader you go. The less in market somebody is, the more they need convinced. The less they identify with the problem you solve. The less they identify with the solution you have. The more in market they are, the more money you can typically generate, the easier it is to close. The further out you go, the less money you can make and the more money it costs to convert those people. I was talking to a set of business partners that came through our agency application you can find down in the description who were doing about a million a month. However, they were spending upwards of $450,000 to make that million a month. They were a little bit above a two to one ROAS, okay? They milked the living shit out of one specific funnel. They even had a way previously that worked tremendously well for them that had a higher ROAS of five to one. However, that ended up dying as time went on. The amount of people that were available for them to convert diminished through time in their original conversion mechanism. And they were very smart. Again, 0.1% of businesses hit these numbers. They were in that level of intelligence bracket to make this maneuver and they did it on their own. Huge shout out to these guys, truly, for being a smart as they were. They took this exact lesson. They went mass market where the most people usually are. So what I don't like about what Chet Holmes talked about in the ultimate selling machine is that it's illustrated in a way where these other markets are typically even, okay? I disagree with that. What I typically view it as is yes, you for sure have that three to 4% that at any given time are in market, ready for whatever solution you offer. They want your product or service. They identify with the fact they need it. And they're actively looking for something to buy that solves their problem. That's in market. Some markets are fucking massive. Take the sales industry or like real estate as example. Those are huge, massive markets that have a fuckload of people in them participating at one time. In addition to that, they usually have some level of recruitment that continuously replenishes the quantity of people at each stage in these processes, okay? That that's what gives them the continued growth they experience. There's businesses that are taking responsibility for bringing in customers, okay? I'll give you an example. A lot of you can probably think of and relate to right away with the personal branding niche, okay? The info product space. Russell Brunson, the owner of ClickFunnels. I love Russell Brunson because he creates business for me because he'll go out of his way to take responsibility for creating personal brands and same thing with companies like TikTok, Instagram, YouTube. I fucking love these companies because again, they're giving opportunities for a person who sells information to say, oh, I could run that business. I could get the distribution for it. They grow themselves through time. Like Russell sells them on the opportunity of selling info products. And if you participate in that niche, you ought to also be thankful for Russell Brunson. If you in any way, shape or form benefit from personal brand, you ought to love TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube because again, somebody could find a passion for something like just start making food on TikTok, grow a tremendous following and all of a sudden they've got a business where they're selling knives and salt and cookbooks and fucking build a whole food brand around it. They could come out with info products on how to make certain foods. They could be a three Michelin star chef, make an entire info product on how to be a Michelin chef to make that level of food. You know, and again, most info products and people that sell them are getting traction from the ad channels, from these social channels. And again, people like Russell telling them the business model and putting them on game, activating customers. 
okay? This three to 4%, it doesn't always replenish itself in given markets that don't have somebody out there that's refilling the bin that everybody else is taken from. Treat it like a lake in the middle of a desert, okay? Somebody comes along and just starts siphoning water out of the lake and there's no fucking rain or water source to fill the lake back up, the lake's gonna eventually go dry, okay? That's how markets work. Some markets don't have a replenishing source. Nobody's out there taking responsibility for growing the quantity of people that participate in that industry you're selling into. And if that's the case, you might have to be the one that takes that responsibility. That's called mass market, okay? I do agree with Chet Holmes in the sense that I think there's a broader market of people that are borderline, okay? And when I say borderline, they need convinced. That's all this really comes down to. These folks, they could be sold. They're less warm than the in-market people. If you found a way to convince them, this commonly happens with supplement brands. This happens most commonly with businesses where you don't really need something, but you see it and you're like, holy shit. I think the company Ninja, as an example, does an exceptional job at this. They had a product called the Ninja Creamy, which is essentially like an ice cream maker, but you'd see content for like a fitness guy saying, oh, I just made this uh, protein ice cream. Like here's the macros. It had like next to no calories, a fuckload of protein. And he's sitting there telling you it tastes amazing. And he's showing you how the Ninja Creamy works with like the ingredients that he put in there, how he froze it, how the Ninja Creamy thing like made it look into, you know, like good looking ice cream, you know? And again, this product's like, you probably aren't sitting here thinking to yourself, you know what I need? I need an appliance for my countertop that makes ice cream out of whatever fucking ingredients I throw into it. Now, you're probably not actively sitting here thinking that, but you see a piece of content for something like that. Hey, the needs convinced crowd, you can become a conversion, okay? Great example, this time of year, it's the holiday season, and my fiance absolutely loves hot chocolate. She's a little hot chocolate junkie. Okay, and I typically every year will go to William Sonoma and I'll get her just a lot of really expensive hot chocolate. It's what she loves, it's her favorite thing. Gets her, even though we live here in Miami, Florida, into like a holiday type mood, you know, beyond the decorations we'll throw around the house. And this year in particular, I was just thinking I was gonna do the same thing. I'm an in-market demographic for William Sonoma. However, those people over at William Sonoma, whoever the advertiser is, I hope you see this, you really fucked up. You didn't run any remarketing ads based on historical purchases. Dude, you could have had me buying hot chocolate back in like October for the holidays. If you just would have run a basic remarketing ad with historical purchases I've made for like three, four years in a row, you know, but you did it. Who did? A company called Hotel Chocolate. I don't know why they named it that, but they had a couple hundred dollar hot chocolate machine. It was one of the most beautiful machines. It looked very high quality, had like a metal handle on it. It showed the chocolate mix that they sell with it. Wasn't that cheap powder shit. It was chocolate flakes or chocolate shavings and they had them in all kinds of different flavors and I thought to myself I was like what a combo they even had an advent calendar where you could open it up each day of December and get a different flavor of hot chocolate or some other shit they have in the box and I bought all of it I was a happy hotel chocolate customer this year again I was in market for William Sonoma through seeing content and ads for the other brand I became the needs convinced crowd and converted into in market this demographic is still historically really good to sell into okay now beyond Beyond that, we have a much broader audience. Now this audience is huge. This is where I say I disagree with what Chet talks about with the ultimate selling machine. Respectfully to Chet. To be fair, this is mass market. Now mass market is mixed with a group of people that they don't even necessarily identify as somebody that could be convinced. These are people that it's gonna cost a lot more to convert than the in market and the needs convinced, the uh, borderline folks, okay? Mass market is where you're gonna spend 450K a month and flip a two to one row ass. You know, mass market is taking people who could be in a set of conditions where they absolutely could and should benefit from your product or service, but it's gonna take a lot more impression counts. It's gonna take far more convincing, by far. They're not borderline at all. These folks are people who need a tremendous amount of content. They need group thing, right? And I'm not trying to make them sound stupid. I mean, you could be in mass market right now as a highly intelligent individual. I could be as well. Just, again, with different products that we just don't think in any way, shape, or form that we need. If we saw them, the, especially the first time, maybe even the first couple times, you'd be like, nah, I don't need that shit. You know, that, that's not for me. You immediately scroll away from it. You don't really pay much attention to it. But again, through time, it's like you become more and more and more convinced just from pure repetition and, and attacking different angles 
on your psyche about why you potentially need this until you kind of become the I'm convinced demographic that I might be able to benefit from that. Now, I want to be clear in saying this could range from all kinds of things, okay? I'll give you a great example with common info brands that sell a broad way of making some form of money. It could be as an example trading and it could be real estate, like investing into real estate. Let's just use a common example like that, okay? If you're in the position where you've never invested into real estate, you've heard so much data. If you just take a moment and reflect on it, or if you don't trade in the stock market, again, think about this. If you do invest in real estate, but you don't trade in stocks yet, think about just the pure amount of data that you've seen over a broad duration of time that has sold you into not doing it, or you just haven't gotten the right data in front of you yet that finally converts you and turns you into a customer, okay? That's what I'm talking about. It's like you don't, you haven't gotten hit with the right angle yet. Give you a great example. For real estate, I remember it was 2021. At this point, I'd actually worked with a tremendous amount of different real estate info product brands. And on top of that, we'd raised capital for funds, syndicates, family offices, all related to real estate investments. I knew the power of it. I knew the tax depreciation benefits I could get from it. Uh, I just honestly, I never really thought it was good cash flow. Unless I could buy like a huge property or something with tons of doors, I didn't really think it'd be worth it. I, you know, it'd just take too much time is what it seemed like for so little returns for such a sustained period of time until it eventually, the tipping point would occur and would give me enough money to justify making it worth it. I always made so much money elsewhere. It just again, didn't make sense from a time perspective. Okay. I'd heard of commercial, uh, residential, residential short-term rentals, residential long-term rentals. I've heard of sober living homes. I've heard of uh, rehab centers, you know, which they're different. I've heard of commercial, uh, I've heard of uh, house flipping, wholesaling, uh, full-on development, uh, land flipping, and probably a few others on top of that, okay? The uh, the tax one too, where like you go to the local courthouse and like you buy somebody's property, you didn't pay their property taxes. And then eventually it was 2021, scrolling on TikTok and I see Mr. Tom Cruise, the guy who's known very well for Section 8. And Tom's pitching, investing in a Section 8 real estate. He keeps using this term. He keeps saying guaranteed rental income. And at first I'm like, there's no such thing. And I'm, you know, scroll right past it, mass market, okay? Don't give a fuck yet. But eventually like I saw his content at a, at a high enough frequency from the same person. And one of the angles eventually landed with me really well. And I heard him out on the messaging. And when I really took the time to understand and like, you know, kind of overcome the skepticism of it, which happens through time as again, there's enough impression counts. You, your guard kind of comes down a little bit and you're more willing to listen to it because you see it so frequently. You're just like, there's no fucking way that this could be hitting me as frequently as it is. Something's got to be like legitimate about it. Let me at least try to understand it more. See if I'm missing out on something, you know? Okay, I digress. I see Mr. Tom Cruise's content. I finally start hearing it out. And man, it just clicked. Made perfect sense. Matter of fact, I'd never heard of another real estate investing vehicle that made more sense than this. And it seemed worth it. So Tom was pitching an offer for $500 for a one hour call with him. And I was like, you know, I'll fucking do that in a millisecond. He goes, I pay Tom 500 bucks, get on a call with him. First 30 minutes, he answers all my questions. I love the idea of it. You know, I was being transparent with him about monthly free cash flow and how much I could put into it. And he was doing math with me on like giving me, giving me an example of how much I could make in, in cash flow and how much like overall net worth and properties I could acquire and like what the tax benefits could be. We covered all that in about the first 30 minutes. I spent the next 30 minutes telling him what he needed to do for his info product business. And to be fair, and, and uh, again, not just air out Tom's business, he's done extremely well. Um, point I'm trying to make, I see Tom's offer about Section 8 real estate, and it just clicks. Again, I go from mass market to a buyer, but Tom's total organic impression count with me, no exaggeration, it's probably in the 20s to 30s, okay? Until I eventually converted. It took the right message finally landing with me for me to become convinced that like that's a good idea. And that's what happens in mass market, except instead of getting the benefit of the, of the organic high quantity of impression counts naturally happening for you, hopefully you can get some benefit from that. You instead have to do it with paid advertising. And through direct response and through content, you have to reach a group of people that are not identifying as buyers for your niche, your product, your service, okay? And you got to through time and through pure consistency and a high frequency count, eventually get this large swath. This is the literal largest swath of people that exists in order for you to convert. Now, there's a point to all of this and why I just took all this time to explain it to you. And it all relates to the chunk method. When you get into the position where you typically see a cap, okay, there's a bunch of reasons that you'll see caps. Either your three to 4% of people that are in the position to convert 
it's too small and or it's not replenishing. It's not self-replenishing because no one's taking responsibility for going and, re and replenishing it for you, giving you more people to consistently sell into through time. So you experience caps or in some instances, diminishing returns through time. Those caps range. Like if I'm selling to chiropractors, there's like tens of thousands on earth. You know, it's super small niche. If I'm selling to like surgeons, same kind of concept. If I'm selling into sales, that cap, I'm probably not going to reach until I'm already, I can make $2 million a month in sales and probably still not exceed the two to 3% of people, the three to 4% of people that are probable to convert at a given moment. Okay. So again, my point being, you have to first think the niche, the industry, the market as a whole that I'm selling into, how big is my three to 4% probable to be? Could that be why I'm experiencing a cap? Okay. And if it is, that's Great to know, because there's a few things you could do. Thing number one, you start mass marketing. You cut into your ROAS a bit and you try to scale the living shit into a mass market offer. And hopefully your offer is gonna be accepted and you have enough money to test and endure through what it takes to actually get to the point where you can consistently convert at mass market scale. But remember, once you do successfully accomplish that, if you successfully accomplish that, there's tremendous upside. You have essentially the broadest market possible out of anything that you could ever tap into. You have the literal broadest market when you officially and successfully accomplish mass marketing. Okay, but again, it's the least profitable. It's gonna take a lot of testing and a high frequency count and just a lot of money to make it worth it, okay? So what are the things you do at smaller scales when you're attempting to get to the million dollar months, but you've already hit that ceiling somewhere at a couple hundred grand for one of your conversion mechanisms? You have to add another conversion mechanism. So even if I still target the same three to 4% and or if I'm targeting the borderline needs convinced crowd on top of that, that, that's great. Maybe I capped out with my call funnel. No problem. I'm going to add in a webinar funnel. I'm going to add in DM strategies. I'm going to add in an event. I'm going to potentially add in like low ticket to high, high ticket by feeding the low ticket people to my setters and closers to upsell. To be clear, this is where the chunk method comes in. Instead of just hitting the ceiling and thinking, well, I need to convert to like the least profitable thing that takes a fuckload of money and time to figure out mass marketing, I'm gonna instead just add new conversion mechanisms to what I'm already doing. That way I could get to that million dollars a month, but I'm gonna have a nice even distribution or a slightly uneven distribution that adds chunks of revenue to that total million dollars that I'm able to produce each month, okay? I close it out with this for you. There's also one more tip, okay? That isn't necessarily a conversion mechanism or having to switch to mass market that can also work, which is just a marketing lesson in general. This is what we call the majority hook. Ideally, you've tapped into it. The majority hook is a specific way of talking to a demographic that the majority of those folks resonate with versus minority hooks, they're much smaller, they range in size, and they range in quantities of people that you're gonna be able to convert out of them. The majority hook, again, just to reiterate, is the hook that the most people resonate with that converts the most people. When you get to the point where you start actively getting all of these hooks tapped into, well, you end up in a really good spot because what you're able to do as a result is you're able to sell to more people by switching up the messaging, okay? Great example of this, you might find that one of your hooks Okay, look at it from a click-through rate basis. This is typically the best indication for hooks. In addition to that, thumb stop rates. But remember, the hook is both what you say at the beginning of your video ads, it's what you use in your copy, it's what you use in your static image ads, all of it, could be any of it. Doesn't necessarily just mean the front end part of your videos that capture people's attention and get them to stop. It's generally an indication with your click-through rate, your link click-through rate, okay? I can ideally see at a minimum to, to know I'm hitting a majority hook, somewhere between upwards of at least at a minimum 2% all the way up to 8%. 8 percenters are super fucking rare, okay? Super rare. You're not only using the majority hook if you're getting like six to 8% link click-through rates on a, on a conversion campaign, to be clear. Not on a link click campaign, not on a traffic campaign, on a conversion campaign, okay? If you're getting six to 8% unique link, link click-through rates, you found the ultimate hook. You found what converts the most people out of whoever the fuck you're targeting and it's, you, you should milk the living shit out of that hook 
Because again, the most people out of everybody that you're targeting is resonating with that specific hook. Generally, so again, look at it like this. The majority hook will have a minimum of 2% all the way up to about 8% for the unique link click-through rate, okay? Versus in your minority hooks, like you might see anywhere from one to 2%. You might see, again, it could still be one to 2% for like your third biggest hooks. The smallest ones that the least the amount of people resonate with, these are typically like anything sub 1%. Anything that's below 1% is typically like the minority hooks. You're not doing it the right way. You're hitting the smallest quantities of people. Like out of everybody you're targeting, like everybody's just seeing your stuff and you know, keep in mind, a majority of the folks that see your stuff when you're in a position of seeing a large quantity of people half unresponsive, well, this just represents half of the market is still available to you to tap into, but you gotta find what that reason is that's actually gonna get them to convert. If you find that reason, you instantly unlock. Like I'm talking instant fucking taneously unlock. A whole new large quantity of revenue that rolls into the business as a result of tapping into it, okay? It's worth continuing to rotate through hooks and really try to put some intentional deep thought into it to figure it out. It's great to talk to your customers and try to find reasons, but here's the issue. Like if you've been tapping into minority hooks and converting people, the minority hooks are typically the reasons that they're gonna say they bought. So like you're gonna get all this data from your literal customers on why they purchased and you gotta remember like what brought them in wasn't the majority hook. So customer feedback doesn't always act as an indication is the point I'm trying to make that you're actually tapping into it or not. Because just because an ad converts them a particular way and they bought, again, doesn't mean that their hook's randomly gonna change to the majority hook in their feedback. You can still ask and find out. I'm not saying you should actively neglect or not talk to your customers. It's great to know and it's great to hear and it's great to find out and use this feedback regardless. But it's, from my experience, it typically always comes down to looking at behavior and observing the behavior of the market you're actively selling to rather than hearing what the people say. There are so many instances of people out there that say particular things and then when you observe their behavior, they do completely different things. And that's why you wanna observe the behavior more so than listening actively to what they say. This is done through common market research. I can make an entire video solely about market research. It's something I'll talk in depth about inside of my inner circle program where we do twice a month one-on-one -on -one calls, weekly group calls, calls, quarterly masterminds. We have our group chat, our group chat on Telegram full of rich people trying to get a hell of a lot richer. You DM me in real time. We're shooting voice notes back and forth, talking, going through your problems, making sure you're scaling the living shit out of whatever it is that you're doing. Links in the description for that if you want to check it out. I do in-depth videos on things like that on our weekly group calls regularly. Here, I probably have to make a separate video where I withhold a lot of the good information and I give you stuff you can use that's going to make you more money regardless. But again, I save all this stuff for people who pay me. I hope you understand. I digress. Point I'm attempting to make. The chunk method outside of just adding a new conversion mechanism, pivoting to a mass market approach, and or adding in new hooks until you eventually find the majority hook that can lift the ceiling. That's what the majority hook does. The majority hook raises the ceiling. It increases the capacity of conversions that can come from the existing conversion mechanisms and from the existing markets you're already tapping into. Chunk method applies to all of these. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'd encourage you to check out some of my other ones where all we talk about is hitting million dollar months. I've also got a blog now, jeremyhaines.com. There's a link for that down in the description that you can find probably for this literal video that you're watching right now. In addition, there's all kinds of other great content on that site. I'd encourage you to go check it out. And again, if you're rich, trying to get a hell of a lot richer, and you are serious about the growth and applying the lessons. I've talked to a lot of guys that watch this channel that they try to take the actions I talk about and they still see great results doing it. But again, think about the level of result that you'd get if you actually got my help firsthand. And I'm not bullshitting you when I say this. Like what I talk about here on YouTube, yeah, it's phenomenal. It's gonna make you a fuckload more money. Okay, but I wanna be extremely direct with you. You don't think that for the people who pay me, I don't have the real fucking sauce I'm putting them on game to? I'll leave that up to you to think with, okay? Press the links down in the descriptions, get the offer that's right for you. Subscribe to the channel if you're still not subscribed. Like the video either way. Thank you for being here, thank you for watching, and I hope you get richer. Talk soon.